and there we go. We froze. We did. It's funny because when those are over, it's like, uh, I feel hey, like nothing happened. Hey, there it was, and we then, froze, then guys. And then we add some stuff and it becomes worse. Isn't that doing. cool? <laughs> okay, uh, to those of you who took part in the book club, thanks for reading along with us or listening along. It's way easier than reading, guys. Um, this last one. I, and I have a question in general. Okay, ask your general question. What speed do you listen? Depends on the book. It really does. 1. Sure. 2, 1. 1.25 was my go-to speed. Yeah. Because I felt like 1.5 was too fast, and in one you're like, ah, oh, this could go a little bit faster. Right. But this book was a little information dense, and a lot information dense at the very beginning, like well, the introduction. And what it was. So I went speed one. I would say even more than that was. I went speed half. <laughs> every, it was very linear. So well, what he would do is he, he traced you know, from from the chapter one, the, the discovery of glass as a thing, yeah, um, all the way through, and we can talk about that. But everything was linear, so everything built on the thing before it. So it was like very step by step oriented. So it's not the type of thing that if you zoned out for a second because yeah. you were, you know, you were deciding if you were going to go through that yellow light or stop, mm. then you've you've missed a key point. Yeah. Um, but I still went one point two five. So oh, you did. What is that for? Yeah, so I, I had to slow it down a little bit. The Neanderthal, or, or just keep it, keep it go one point two five at, at one point oh. But and the reason why I did it is <clears throat> because I wanted to, I wanted to just get through, more. get through more of it. But I also wanted to force myself. I'm, I probably missed a lot. You can probably talk about a lot more well, than I can because I was kind of yeah. I would miss a lot. I of actually things. listened to the first chapter uh, while on a uh, a trip with my wife, anniversary trip. And uh, I was like, I want to listen. I need to listen to this whole thing and uh, I'm bring in I, and work. I, and on I was kind of like, I don't That's know risky. if this is going to be interesting to you, but we got into this book and we were just both like, we listened to it all the way to it, Santa Barbara. It was really cool. Now, so the the glass thing was even just, for wives. It was the it was mind blowing, right? Because first of all, uh, glass being discovered was it's glass. I think it's a silica dioxide. Is that is yeah? That what is so it really has no real use in nature. It's not something that uh, from any natural environment is really being used. It was something that formed probably due to a comet hitting the earth, a hitting a sandy area and turning all of the sand into glass because it has to be heated to like over a thousand degrees or whatever. So it created this huge swath of glass that just existed naturally that a dude found it one time and they like carved it into something and that was it. They just were like, we, what are we gonna do with this? We what, don't know what did, to, a, a to big, do with this. A big piece of it ended up in King Tut's tomb. In King Tut's tomb. As, as a piece of jewelry. Right, for centuries it was in there. It wasn't even discovered until they found King Tut's tomb. Right, so it was like, I mean, so glass was not a natural occurrence except for that like right. freak uh, accident of nature. But what they ended up doing, this is the, the point A to point B is so interesting. They find this stuff and somebody I would say point figures a to point out. Z, really, but. Somebody figures out you can look through this stuff and it magnifies things for you. So what they did is they gave it to like monks and other people who had access to books and they had spectacles. And the spectacles were around for like almost a century before anybody else had any use for them because normal people didn't read books until the printing press. The printing press is invented. Now the, uh, the and, general public. And I think you, you skipped the step about, I love the part about the glass blowers were. Um, I must've been going through a line to that point. There was, all these artists started blowing glass and like making art out of glass yeah. because that was the main thing you could you could you could make art out of it. Right. But you had to you had to you had to stoke a lot of fire and make a lot of heat in order to make glass in order to blow glass and they would start burning down their parts of the cities. So all of the glass blowers were exiled yeah. to an island. An island. The glass blowing island. And they were all there. And what it did was it created this. Um, it's like a think tank. A think tank of glass. of glass blower <laughs> glass think tank. artists. And so they just started developing, and I'm pretty sure that's where the, spectacle the came spectacles from. came from because right. they were just exploiting different ways to use glass yeah. because they were all together and up one up in each other and right. like comparing notes. That's and, what you guys need is you need to go all go to an island and be a think tank for glass blowing. Or you guys, what, what, what is, not us. What we're is not. the new glass blowing, guys? Figure that out. That's what this, the application is. Anyway, 
They make the spectacles. Nobody needs them except people have access to books. Then the printing press, Gutenberg invents the printing press, and all of a sudden everybody has access. It turns out that almost like a very large percentage of the population was farsighted. Needed glasses. But they don't. They didn't matter because they don't read anything. But all of a sudden they're reading and they all realize we can't read this. So now there's a huge boom in the spectacle market. So now we've got lenses and they start developing lenses. They make lenses better. And then somebody figures out, well, if I take two of these lenses and put them in front of each other, I can see things from a distance. Mm -hmm. They make the telescope, which gives us these discoveries about the universe, basically the solar system. And so it, just somebody finding glass and then some dudes on an island and then the, the whole book is about how innovations don't happen on just one path. It took Gutenberg inventing the printing press, something that seems totally unrelated for these two things to merge to lead to the development of like high quality lenses which is basically done so much for us as a society. And now glass is, and, oh, and the thing about the dude shooting an arrow through the molten glass and it created these fibers that were like 90 feet long. Mm -hmm. so That's basically, how fiberglass was invented. Yeah, He shot an arrow through molten glass and it created a fiber that was 90 feet long and, and, and lots of other ones. And he was and like, they wove it. It, let's weave it together and it made fiberglass, but and it also created fiber, fiber optics. optic cables. And uh, like the, the glass components of your phone. That's why if you go into a place that has really fast internet and you go to the computer that it's coming into, it'll be, It'll be stuck in there with an arrow, right? Exactly. And they, they, you actually don't yeah, need stuck the, right in there with you an arrow. You don't need the arrow anymore, but it's just it's, it's nostalgic. Just a, it's it's just it's something a throwback. Well, we've always done it that way. Yeah. Stick in the arrow into the into the Ethernet port or the fiber port. Don't do that, kids. Or the optical drive, but or the it, screen. Sometimes you'll just go into like a like a like a PC convention and yeah, they'll just be PC like screens. Yeah. There'll be How screens about a, with like, like a computer, arrows computer stuck lab, in them. Computer lab. A computer lab. I do it in computer labs usually when I right. stick the arrows in. Right. College students lining yeah, up outside computer out labs with computer arrows lab. in their hand just waiting to go in. And you gotta let go as soon as you get hit. the jab Because you can get electrocuted. You gotta let thrust go and let go. At the last second. Yeah. And um, there's, because there'll be bodies there too. Yeah, you wonder yeah. why the bodies are there? Because they don't let go of the arrow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at the right point. And one step below that and is you get a too. suction arrow and you stick it on a computer screen and people are like, oh, I get it. He didn't wanna bust the right. computer but he just wanted to make a point. That's like computer comedy. Yeah, that's computer comedy. That's when you that's when you just do that. That's well, really glass there's, comedy. There's no function at all to the suction of the thing. <laughs> and um, now even young kids are doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and, um, when a kid shoots a TV screen with a Nerf gun, you're like, He's that little jerk, but that kid a, is making a statement about science and history. And internet and a pun, it's a pun really. It's a visual it pun. it's a smart kid, if a smart kid's shooting a Nerf gun. Smart, smart kids right. shoot Nerf guns. And then they <laughs> they turn like 16 and they get their driver's license in some states, not yeah. every state, yeah, but Maine. some states. North Carolina. North Carolina, um, Texas. And what you'll see is that on their windshield, you'll see one of those Arrows. Arrows, a suction yeah, arrow, right? And they're usually going to the School of Science and Math. Right. On their way to the School of Science and, and Math. And, and, it's, and it's really uh, just an act of rebellion. Yeah, um, And society. a pun, it's right. still a pun. Right. And, but it's kinda like, you mm. know how you'll see moms who on their back window, they'll have that sign. Baby on board. Baby on board. Yeah, and so it's the same thing? It's the same thing because the, different. they become moms. Yeah. So that's that's a little lesson there in history, and so it that's that's an example of the adjacent possible. Yeah, Once yeah. you have something, they talk. They talk Baby about, on board signs are the adjacent possible to fiber optic glass, glass. arrow. Uh, got some dudes on, dudes on a island. The also, thing I like to think about. also the hummingbird though, effect. The thing it's called the hummingbird effect. The thing I like to think about is what is happening right now, Link. This and we don't have to think We're about talking. this. You know what? We make internet videos. We're gonna do that forever. We've innovated already. That's it. We're, we're out. Oh gosh. Our, our toothpaste tube has been completely <laughs> expended. But you it guys. It hasn't been squeezed. It's been like someone's <laughs> meticulously rolled it up. You know how when you yeah. go into like someone's bathroom and it's like they've meticulously, they, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like, hey, ain't nothing else coming yeah, out yeah, of that. Yeah, we're at that point. That's us. But you have a full toothpaste tube. And what I want you to do is take your toothpaste and point it at something awesome. Because, <laughs> listen, I'm serious about this. Someone is going to figure out some innovation. You don't even have to be the person who figures out the specific innovation. You need to look at what's happening around you and think, oh, this innovation here. This chapter Just point about the tube and squeeze. The chapter don't even think. about the guy 
who took the ice from Boston, cut it and put it into a boat and took it to the Caribbean and he was a failure for many years. But he eventually became the guy who came up with the refrigeration, not the technology, but the need for refrigeration. And he he became a millionaire just selling ice. He would ship ice to like India from Boston in a boat that was, and he would just insulate it with sawdust. But it led to this need, like it led to the, basically led to the frozen food industry. It it created demand for ice. alternate forms of ice, which was the air conditioner, which another guy created in, for, he was a surgeon. No, he crea- created it. <clears throat> he, he created He created a room that would have certain substances at a low temperature. No, it was an ink drying. It was a printer. It was it came back to the printing. He they, they would print things and he oh, wanted- that, the- that, that was the, the home air conditioner, but before that there was a guy who wanted to <clears throat> keep, he was a surgeon, Parts. I can't remember that part. Livers. I don't know. We're making that part up. Anyway, you got it. You listen. It's we should. Li- we were listening like three X at that point. Take or your toothpaste tube out and grab hold of it. <laughs> point it in the right direction and squeeze as hard as you can. All right, baby, I'm bored. 